Because of the following special program, Wonder Woman and the Incredible Hulk will not be presented this evening. It's time to get all your Star Wars news in a single file. This is Making Tracks. Here are your hosts, Mark Nubo and Dave Tree. That's not true. You're listening to Making Tracks, I'm your host Mark Newbold, and today we head down to Brockenhurst College for Comic-Con at Film New Forest, new event put on by our very own Dave Tree, my co-host here on Making Tracks. The guest that we speak to today is Ross Beeman. Now, Ross played the, the Jedi youngling Saws Bandine in Revenge of the Sith. He's the little kid that uh, stood up to Master Skywalker. Uh, everybody remembers that scene. So this is my chat with Ross at Comic-Con at Film New Forest. Take it away. So we're at, and I'm going to get this wrong because I always get this wrong, we're at Comic-Con at mm. Film New Forest. Film New Forest, correct. Thank you yeah. very much. Uh, with Ross Beeman. That's correct. On Revenge of the Sith. You got my name. There you go. You got my film, yes. Oh. We're going to talk a little bit about the film. We're going to talk a little bit about all sorts of stuff. We've got 40 minutes. So, Sweet. So let's start off. So you came into a Star Wars film, which is what people know you for. Yes. Were you a fan before you did the film? Yeah, bear in mind you were a nipper. So. I was a fan, but on the scale of, say, a casual watcher to an absolute fanatic yeah. who doesn't leave the room to stop watching it, I'd say I was a probably be like a six on that scale. Yeah, I liked it. I, I liked the Attack of the Clones film the best. Yeah. yeah. What was your was back then? At that age, how old were you when you did that role? I was six years old. Oh, yeah. Okay. So and I, and I got the role because. My mum used to work with someone who then went on to work in a like children's like casting agency. Yeah, yeah. And she, suddenly she gets the email one day, "Would your son like to be in Star Wars?" And then that message was relayed onto me. And oh, I mean, what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. So what was your thing at that age? Just a six-year-old kid back in what was it? Two thousand and three. They filmed it. Two thousand and. Four, yeah. I think. Don't quote me though. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure. So I what probably was, know this. What was yeah. young Ross into back then? I loved uh, Lord of the Rings, yeah. Star Wars, like playing fantasy fights with my, with my mates in the playground. It's yeah. Pretty much what we did. We'd pretend to be these certain characters, like fighting with lightsabers, fighting with swords, whatever. We create our own fantasy worlds and getting that, getting that message kind of tied into it even more. It was. I don't remember what I thought about then because it's so long ago, but yeah. it must have felt amazing. So when you get the call <coughs> as a kid, you take taken to the set. Obviously, before you get to the set, I'm stepping ahead too far. Presumably, you get a costume, you get your outfit designed. And, yes. And so what was that process like for you? Obviously, bear in mind, I'm talking to you now as a... How old are you now? 20? 21, 21 yeah. 21, so as, as, a, as a man. Uh, but you were a kid then, so it's a different process. What was that whole thing like for you back then? It was surreal. I I had a vague idea of what they were doing, obviously making myself look nicer for the cameras. I yeah. thought the makeup was a bit pointless since I was a boy. Like, I don't need to look pretty. <laughs> yeah. Like, but uh, yeah, when you had the choice of hair, what, how many braids would you like? What color braids? And yeah. I thought, wow, you'd be able to customize my own character. So I just thought, you know what? I think a lot of the Jedis would choose that multicolored braid, so I'm gonna be a bit different. I would yeah. just choose one yellow stripe. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for you, like you say, you just said, as a kid on the playground, you're playing Lord of the Rings, playing Star Wars, you, that's all the stuff of the time. Yes. This is way up your alley. This is totally right for you. 100%, yeah. So you've got your costume, you see yourself in the mirror, you're starting to, you're starting to feel it. It's, it feels like I was a different person when I put it on. I, I didn't really think of myself. Not the fact that, oh, I'm a Jedi now, or that I'm myself in a Jedi costume. It was somewhere in between. Yeah. I don't know. And was this the first acting role? felt like an imposter, yeah. Was this your first acting role? It, was, it would have been my second acting role. So the first one, I played a part of a younger version of a director who was making films in this comedy called My Life in Film. Right. And I played the younger version of this guy called Chris Marshall, who's the actor who played the guy. And he used to do the BT adverts. So yeah, I was putting on cowboy costumes, pretending to light a model rail, way track on fire. Yeah. 
and my role afterwards was part of a reconstruction of the Hindenburg disaster, wow. which National Geographic organised. And yeah, I played the part of a yeah, young German boy who survived the disaster with yeah. like third degree burns. So in everything I've been in, and I've even been injured or I've been killed. I was going to say. Yeah. You, you've not had much luck in that respect then. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all, no. Not that, you know. Still here, still here. Still, I was going to say. Still, still alive, it's good. Yeah. So, so you've got your costume. You've got it right in your head. You've picked your braids. That's, that's important for a, for a Padawan, isn't it, for a young lady? 100%, yeah. That's a big deal. So when you got to the set, what was the scenario like? Was it, was it a blue screen set? Was there physical aspects to it? How did that work? It was a big blue screen set, and the only objects in the actual set were the separate sofas where the younglings hid behind yeah. and, the, and the flooring. It was, I think it was this inlaid like pattern out of the wood which is quite elaborate and that, that was it and then there was the crew to the right of me with all the cameras and the lighting and the yeah. effects and there was the cast to the left of me and yeah I only got the part because I was the first person to put my hand up and say yeah I actually do know the line and right. yeah, the rest is history and I just picked me and you were stuck with it as yeah. a kid you were, you were brave enough to go yep that's me I'll yeah well I'm, I've got to thank my parents for that because before that, they kept they got given the line by the post, which I'm sure a lot of the other kids would have done as well. But they like kept on like telling me, kept on asking me, "Do you know the line? Do you know the line?" And I kept repeating it to them over and over again over the next couple of weeks. And because on the day I wasn't really talking to many other people, wasn't really socialising and making much friends. It's like, what, what, what am I doing here? And then I heard the casting director say, "Who knows the line?" I was the first person to put my hand up, yeah. just because it was an easy connection. And yeah. yeah. It's one of the times in my life it probably paid more to be a bit antisocial. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, we all have these moments, don't we? When if you stick your neck yeah. out of it, it, things come good. Get it. Early bird gets the one. That's the 100%. one. 100%. So, so, who else was on set? Was it, well, well, here's a big question. Was this scene directed by George? Yes. And uh, I forget the, uh, the producer of it. Rip the comment. No. I've forgotten his name. Blonde hair? White hair? But anyway, uh, yeah, it was directed mainly by him. It took about four cuts before he got the scene right because yeah. at the beginning when I took his direction when Anakin like, shoots his lights up it goes like that I yeah. kept looking when he when he unsheathes it and I wasn't meant to do that I was just meant to look into his eyes yeah. and then like, have a like, shocked expression on my face so yeah. it, took, it took a few tries before I finally did it but yeah. I think the end result was quite organic yeah. and natural and as a kid you don't really think about these things consciously like maybe an older actor does I think because I was nervous anyway being in front of all these people like this film set which I have no idea the whole context behind it I was a bit nervous anyway so I think that carried on yeah. towards the scene yeah. Yeah. Hey man it's me Kevin Smith a Star Wars fan Fanta Tracks fan So are you acting opposite Hayden in that moment? Yeah I had a little chat with him beforehand about uh, <laughs> which uh, versions of lightsabers were dang more dangerous the kids lightsabers or the adults lightsabers okay. And yeah, the adults' lightsabers are actually sure. more dangerous. Is that the logic that and the uh, kids, the Padawans, are, tra are training with like sparring sabers? They're not fully active. What was the logic behind that? Uh, from what I know, the logic behind it was that the sabers were, I think, as deadly, but they just the reach wasn't long enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need to read up on this, man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you mentioned you mentioned that moment, obviously, when when Anakin snaps the saber on. We we can all read into the moment what's going to happen and you as a young actor do that little almost like a little step back yeah a little like flinch that, that's kind of yeah. flinch exactly that's remembered almost as much as the as the um, as what we kind of know is going to happen next if that, does that make sense you know that, that yeah. your reaction is almost as powerful as the the inference of what we're going to see which we don't definitely and when I was when I was a kid obviously I didn't think that I was I was got killed by someone I acted with I think my parents like, said to me, oh, you, you escaped, don't worry. But it was only until a few months later when my friends watched it and they said, yeah, you actually, you actually did get killed, mate. That's when I finally thought, like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> not the badass I thought I was. Yeah. You're not coming back for sequel. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe in a hologram or a yeah, yeah. dead form. You, know? no, you never know. No, no. no. So, no. so you, you filmed this. Was that the only scene that you filmed? Was that your, your main sequence? That was the only scene that we filmed. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised it even got uh, put into the premiere, to be honest. I just wasn't expecting yeah. it to be. But I think uh, just because of the fact that it does show that Anakin can't go back from this now, that's why they kept it in. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when, how long between filming it and seeing it, what was the gap for you? 
Presumably you were seven or... I think it must have been about five, six months. Yeah, yeah? Yeah. Oh, it was quite a late, quite, feel quite late in the day then, was it, that sequence? Yeah, towards, towards, towards the end of the overall filming process. And it felt a bit weird saying, oh, by the way, I've, I've seen Star Wars. And I'm like, that's not even out yet. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, but I gave them little, like, previews of what the film was like beforehand. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And what did, when you were on set, what other stuff did you see as a kid? You're looking at all these different things. Everything's new, obviously. What, what other things did you see? Or was it very much you were taken to that part of Not the set? Not at all. It's, uh, I think they, they like to do with all the kids where they make them feel welcome. They took me around in a golf buggy around the entirety of Shepherd and Studios. Yeah. And it's mad, the kind of things you see. There's people in the alien costumes smoking cigarettes, not having beers. It's ridiculous. It's, it's completely, even, even as an adult going there, I'd still be gobsmacked what yeah. goes on, yeah. 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 So, how did your friends react? As, as, as again, you were kids. How did your friends react to just you being in Star Wars? Because it is a big deal, obviously. They they loved it, yeah. Especially the, I had one best mate of mine, uh, Charlie. We used to do one. We used to do the whole fancy battles, and it is. He was amazed by it. Obviously, some are kind of a bit sceptical, thinking arms and stuff. I was like, yeah, Billy bullshit. Like, <laughs> keep going. But yeah. once the once it came out, they they're like, wow. And I got quite a lot of respect for it. Secondary school was a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, saying that people asking me to say the line over and over again and it got got really fucking boring yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really tiring yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah excuse yeah. my language sorry but uh yeah and now i'm beginning to kind of respect the fact that i was in it and i know the prominence of the scene now sure. in its full context and the the internet is what i really attribute that to yeah reddit forums just and the memes as well promoting the prequels as a bit of art to be emulated yes, yes. Well, what do you think of that now then with, with the view on it now that's because uh, that's your scene so people not only we, are, we, we know what Anakin did we know the fallout of it because that's the original trilogy how do you view that scene now how you viewed it as a kid would have been different I'm, I'm a Jedi with a lightsaber but now yeah. you look back and go well that's a, that's a key little moment in Anakin's turn how do you view it now I don't know I, I think I view it I view it in a similar lens as when I did as a kid. Like that's that's just me. I'm I'm in that, and yeah. it's just the. I more think about the my whole process of how the filming happened and what I've got from it, rather than I guess the the scene itself. It's sure. it's it's also a bit uh it's also a bit sad really. Yeah. Showing like my innocent, a little self about to be sent off to the chopping block. But because yeah. it was the yeah. it was a PG twelve, I think. Remember the yeah, it was a very, darker film. Very dark film as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 So in the intervening years, then, uh, am I right? This is your first convention. Is this your first? You're 100 percent correct. Fantastic. Yeah. Is this your first interview about this? My second, actually. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So we're in there early. That's good. Um, how <laughs> how have you kind of now not reconciled? That's not the right word. But how do you return to that experience as a kid, as an adult, and talk about it, relate to it? Is it all still very fresh in your head? Ye- Bits and pieces are. I remember probably about 60% of what happened, the key moments, like speaking to Ewan McGregor for 10 minutes before in the lobby. Like Me and my mum were absolutely starstruck when we saw him. In the, we didn't really, I didn't really realise who he was until my mum had to explain to me, that's, that's how you want And then it all clicked, and I was yeah. like, what is happening? Yeah. What's going on? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Why am I here? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's... What's the question again? Sorry. No, it's, yeah. it was just how do you when you're a kid doing these things and I suppose it's like yeah. a Shirley Temple thing you know, she did everything when she was like five and then when she was 60 yeah. she was still talking about the stuff she did even though she had this incredible life as a UN ambassador and all these things and people still asked her about you know yeah surprise you my, my memory my memory of that day is pretty pretty fresh yeah definitely I can't remember hardly anything from that period of time apart from yeah. maybe that maybe a few things but I think when it's a key moment in your life you you remember a lot of course definitely so what's happened in the intervening years what have you been doing I've uh, done my own thing when I was a kid I loved video games and films so that might have uh, scuffled my acting ambitions a little bit <laughs> but uh, yeah now I'm a, I'm, a stu- I'm a student I want to do video marketing and content direction so in a similar kind of broad sphere but I yeah, just want to get my imagination out there do yeah. a bit of graphic design editing for local businesses yeah. so how easily when you're in a conversation does that drop into a conversation? Do you ever not, do you ever not feel the need to mention it? I, I don't really feel the need to mention it. I, I prefer like other people to maybe just work into conversation because I, d- I just don't want to yeah. have it as a forefront. I'd rather get to know someone on a level first before saying, oh, by the way, Freddy Dolly Dar, Star Wars. And then I think it makes it more organic than just basing a relationship sure. first with yells yeah, on Star Wars. And why yeah. is now the right time for you to sort of not 
come out of your... No, because you're not, you've never been embarrassed by it, clearly. But why is now the time that you want to start, you know, doing an event and, and chat about it? Well, yeah, I think, uh, obviously, I've matured a little bit. Yeah. I should hope, by now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I just want to travel a bit, talk about my experience. Yeah. To get a bit of public speaking experience. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. And a bit of coin on the side. Which all, exactly, that's it. And the whole Star Wars, I mean, we had some of the guys on the, the Droid Builders and, and, and Animatronics guys. Yeah. And being in part of Star Wars, it's not just about the guys in front of the camera or the writers or the crew. Star the Wars is a, it's everything. Work People want to hear it. The amount, the amount of time and effort which went into it's ridiculous. And I, it's, I'm honoured to have played such a small part in it. I've only really began to feel that way quite recently. Yeah. Because when you're, when you're a kid, you don't really put it in its entire perspective, really, no. do you? No, no. But, uh, so have you ever done any, what are the conventions, uh, say you've not done conventions, but what other conventions have you been to? Have you been to a Star Wars celebration when it came to the not UK? Not at all. No, I haven't. So I've, 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 been to, uh, I've been to the Bournemouth Comic Con. Yep. Previously this year. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. What do you think of that? It was decent. Yeah, <laughs> I saw uh, a person who played Lysa Aaron from Game of Thrones yep. speaking. That was good. Yep. Love Game of Thrones. Yes. Not so much the last season, though. Are you watching <laughs> the no? Not, not the biggest fan, no. Uh, no. So if you get the, if, I mean, fingers crossed you will, I'm sure now people know that you're sort of out there and doing events that it'll, it'll prosper and go well, but would you like to do, for example, you know, celebrations coming to Anaheim next year? Anaheim 2020. Yep, so, you know, if Anaheim. you have the opportunity to do that over in Whereabouts LA. Whereabouts is in LA? Yeah. yeah, it's Disneyland. 100%, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> So, so other other acting roles. You mentioned you were a young Chris Marshall in that first yeah. in that first piece. You, you played. What was the name of your character in you Revenge of the Sith? Uh, Saws Bandy. There you it's go. It's an anagram of my name, Ross Speedman. When? Yeah. Did, yeah. When did you get the name? When were you given that? Because usually it's Pablo Adar. Given the name. Uh, name given the name. I think. I think it was after the premiere. Really. Like a few months after. Yeah. I think. Because I know I wasn't credited. Yeah. Not sure why procedure behind that but sure. that might have just been a nod to say okay you've had a role we should at least work a little bit so you can yeah. have a link towards it yeah yeah so it's always cool that there's a lot of actors who never get a character name so to have your character name is yeah is a big deal it's crazy yeah so were there ever uh, did you do more acting after revenge of the sith uh no and was is there ever any desire to do more or was there ever any desire to do more? i guess there was a bit later on in life that i'll I would have thought like what would have been like if I would have actually really pushed myself to do acting in the first place but then I, then I realise now that you, you shouldn't really have to push yourself to do something you really want to do yeah. if I was meant to be an actor I'd be an actor right now and I would have continued that because I was a, would have talked to my parents about really wanting to do this production or that production and that didn't happen so yeah. just following my and this path now yeah. Being forced into it. yeah 100% so no regrets it was a great part of my life and I'm benefiting from it now but yeah, yeah. Acting not necessarily, is it's not necessarily not for me. If I was offered a role, yeah. just like cameoing in something or another extra, sure I'd take it up. But I wouldn't like push myself to yeah. go through the process you, of you had a great character yeah. so. mm. mm. I'm going to open it up. Has anybody got any questions? I'm looking at you guys, young young people, <laughs> young Jedi's, young Jedi. Yeah. Has anybody got anything? Yeah, one of the things that was uh, one I remember seeing in the cinema and seeing that scene, I was kind of like, wow, this is really black. You know, that was the, it was bad enough for the sound people, but then, you know, when you went, moved on to the Jedi kids. Yeah. You know, how did you feel as a young actor? When it, when, did it ever hit you about the, how, how grim that scene was? Yeah, it. I mean, I, I, it tears. Until I thought, when I did find out that so, I did actually die, I was, I was like, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, you know, right. it just seemed, you know. Because it, it was a. It was Darth a character. Vader's bad enough, but we all know that. We'll be great to yeah. level. But he's sort of kids, you know. Mm. You know it's inferred, isn't it? It's it was, not it was shown, inferred, but, but no, it's inferred. And in fact, yeah. uh, how, how long did it take to, see, to shoot it? Because obviously, a lot of it was inferred rather than actually seen. It took uh, of it when the kids are sort of standing up. Mm. It took really one day of administration, just getting my yeah. like first like audition like, tapes out there, just to see that I was right for the role. And then uh, just the next day of filming, it took wow. about. Two to three hours. I think I'm going to be bits as a six year old. What think you're going to be? I'm the, I'm the kid that died. <laughs> Where's the whole room? It came, it came, it's coming into, <laughs> it's coming into contact with your, with your mortality at a young age. It's quite a weird thing. Yeah. Thinking that your character 
Oh, it's because I think of that age, you think you're well, invincible, it's reported, yeah. Well, when it's reported, you know, they see which reported, that it's as black as it comes, isn't it? Sure. Really? When you sort of see that, and um, yeah. everyone sort of suddenly realises just how yeah. much he's turned. But he is, yeah. so I'm really surprised, you're actually a linchpin. You're the, when Darth Vader became true Darth Vader. Yeah, a little Prince transition. That, play that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, a good, that's a good point. It yeah. is, it's a key moment. Have you, you have a question, sir? I have a question. I have a forward-thinking question here. Mm. So as you've now started into the world of doing conventions, it's now not unrealistic that you'll bump back into Hayden Christensen at a convention. Ooh, have you thought yeah. how you're going to handle that moment? I don't know, maybe a bit of payback, you know? (laughs) 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 This time it's personal. (laughs) Well, they always do, I mean, you know, the photo shoots at Celebration, they pair people up, you know? I'll definitely definitely walk up to them and give them a little hi, say, you probably don't remember me, but this is is what we did, you you killed me. Oh, he'll remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just put the We're recounting in. it every night. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it'll be a 15 year reunion next year, then, wouldn't it? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll be on it, yeah. yeah. See, so that, that works. Mm-hmm. That works, yeah. 15 year reunion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Long if you time, could yeah. travel the world, let's say you get on the convention circuit and it all mm. pans out wonderfully, yeah. no reason why it wouldn't, where would you like to go the most? What, what country for a start would you love to see the most? I'd like to go to Australia. Yeah. Cool. Just because I've heard great things about it. Yeah. Lovely people, very friendly. Love to go to Sydney. Yeah. Party a little bit afterwards, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got to do that. They have plenty of big events down there, so there's, yeah. there's plenty of big conventions down that part. Yeah, I'm... Yeah, Australia, New Zealand, America, Canada. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And you could fit that, you think you could fit that nicely, because you say you go with the, the, the video editing and all that part. Yeah. It's the sort of thing you could work the two together and make it happen. 100%, yeah. Yeah. Do a bit of client outreach internationally, maybe. Yeah. Got a hustle. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Did your character ever get an action figure? No, not that I know of. That's no. I've heard. I've heard rumours that there was one like was years ago, but I, I, I'm just not sure if it's a generic youngling, which someone's like, oh look, it's you, or if it's an actual specific like character to my name. Or. We we need to. Yeah, you know, if somebody's just walked in the room, we won't want to be talked about. Dave, Dave, stop acting all quiet. Was there an action figure of Ross's character? Did he ever get a figure? He's one of the few that actually doesn't. Um, yeah. So you've got a couple of other young names. You've got um, uh, Jet Lucas. Yeah. Uh, is that Jet just, Sucasa. Yeah. Um, and you've got the... Um, uh, it's the one that's like Shakti. Yeah, yeah, Ashler, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Um, uh, like a little lady one, but they've yeah. not actually done a saws yet. So we could start the campaign yes. with that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 now, it's now. Kickstarter, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you've got at least three to four young ones that have been done, but not okay. so yeah. Right, okay, so the, the campaign starts here. <laughs> That's true. Packs, it's the man. grassroots. The line has been drawn. Two packs, yeah. <laughs> one half in one part of the pack and the other half in the other. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm Warwick Davis and you're listening to Fanfa Tracks. So, so you need an action figure. That's a definite. Okay. <laughs> some, some I'll take to sign the convention. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. So, so this is a completely out there question. Uh, it's just coming to my head. If your character had survived, let's say he got out there, because we didn't actually see him die. We didn't see Mage Windu didn't die. See him die. We saw Darth Maul die, die yeah. and he came back. So, you know, <laughs> let's say your character survived. Where do you think he would have gone? What do you think his future would have been? Bear in mind, he was a young one, so he could have gone anywhere. I think he would have probably heard stories about the different planets out there, and which was the first one which came to his mind. I don't know, I, looking over the planets, I quite like the sound of Naboo. Yeah? Yeah. Did you ever... Very relaxing life back then. Yeah. yeah. Idyllic, nice and quiet. Yeah. Perfect place for a bit of R&R. Yeah. Did your character After seeing ever... your mates being massacred. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Happening everywhere. Mm. Did your character ever have a background? Did you know where he came from as a character? What he's, a bit of biographical information. Yeah, uh, I had a brief synopsis on Wikipedia ages ago. I'm not yeah. sure you filled it out, but maybe someone in closer contact to the people who wrote the story or the writers. And yeah, lived in Coruscant for all my life. Uh, yeah, blonde hair, blue eyes at the time. And yeah, and I had my little clan of younglings with me. Yeah. 
That was it. That's, that's it. Well, there's a question. When you were on set, you mentioned obviously there was the other kids, and I think some. I think Dave just mentioned the the uh, Togruta character, the Shaq T top character. I think that was CG, if I remember. But but some of them mm-hmm. were obviously there on set with you. Did you, as a kid, get to interact with those other kids? Just just hanging out with them whilst you were filming the yeah, scene. I tried, I tried to interact with. Them. I don't think any of them wanted to be my friends. To be fair, <laughs> yeah. that's probably why I got the part in the first place. So yeah. have, fair play, happy days. Yeah. So you kind of stood out as. A little bit, yeah. I've just engrossed in my book about dinosaurs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've got to be in the Jurassic World film, man. That's, that's the next thing, isn't it? Yeah. You've been chopped in half by, like, by a Jedi. I've got now. to get eaten now. <laughs> now you've yeah. got to get eaten by a T-Rex. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions? <clears throat> Go for it. Yeah, well, you may have not got a figure, unfortunately. You, did you like get anything off the set or just go out and buy like a lightsaber or anything? I bought, uh, I bought a little toy lightsaber for myself uh, at Toys R Us. This is one of the extendable ones, I think I bought Anakin's one, but no, apart from that, didn't get anything from the hmm. set of the people. Hmm. Okay. Might have been a bit tempting though at the time, but yeah. yeah. It's just interesting to think that your costume is, is in, a, in the Lucasfilm archive yeah. somewhere. I mean, how cool would it be to, to be reunited with that again? I'd be mad, yeah. I don't think I'll be able to wear it again. Though. I know. <laughs> Not best really in the world. But yeah, I was given a green lightsaber to begin with as part of the filming, so obviously they would add the special effects to it. Yeah. And then they took it away and replaced it with just a handle. I think that was a decision made uh, just before the filming to think, are we actually going to have the kid with a lit lightsaber? Like yeah. he's just been preparing for an enemy to come through the door, or is it going to be more that he's they're completely unprepared yeah, yeah. for coming attack, and it's even more of a tragedy that. Because you trust know. him, your character completely yeah. trusts him. He's master at it. I think he's going to so. save the day. Yeah. 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 Any Ooh. more questions? <clears throat> oh. Right. So I I do have one more question. So you're in Revenge of the Sith. There's new films coming out now. Obviously, uh, sequel trilogy films that are way out. Yes. You know, uh, Force Awakens, Last Jedi. You've got Rise of Skywalker coming. Um, your character, if he had survived. Let's let I'm hypothesizing that. Let's say he had survived and he's made it all the way through yeah. to this era, and it sounds like episode nine is going to be kitchen sink and everything going in. Mm. Where do you think your character would be sitting at this point? What, what, what do you think his involvement could be? This is I've heard, you've seen them. I'm assuming I've, I've seen, seen uh, The Force Awakens and Rogue One. Right. That's the only ones that you want to. Cool. New ones I've seen. Yeah. Please don't crucify me, people. No, that's fine. It's all good. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, I heard a rumour of that out there, I think it circulated on the internet, that I was the, my character turned into Snoke, somehow. Wow. That because of his experience in Coruscant and yeah. seeing his friends die, he had massive trauma, and apparently the scar on across Snoke's head was a slash from Anakin's lightsaber, and that, that circulated for ages, so that's the most popular theory out there if in that case I'd be dead but otherwise <laughs> I'd like to think I'd be alive kicking ass and taking names but who knows that is I've not heard that rumour that is the coolest rumour ever yeah I'm not sure he started it <laughs> <laughs> sure it was probably, probably a mate of mine but no, yeah. that's fantastic and an absolutely brilliant time talking to you uh, happy to be here thank yeah. you for being our guest big round of applause for us That's all for this special episode of Making Tracks. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Android, Spotify, SoundCloud, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and Spreaker. If you want to find Fanta Tracks out there in the wild, you can find us on smart speakers such as Amazon, Alexa, Apple HomePod, Google Home, and Sonos. We're also available in the car with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on gaming consoles and television. You can find us on Fanta Tracks TV, on YouTube, or the Fanta Tracks app. And of course, you can drop onto the dedicated landing page for Fantatrax Radio on fantatrax.com. We'll be back very soon, but for now, please, guys.